So okay. the foundation of this tagline, I love the concept that that was the bar where you yeah, started. We were just joking because we kept adding things to it and then we would end with because it's not complicated enough. Yeah, there's so many moving parts to the show and so much, you know, when you go live that when you want to do something like this, you're like, oh, right, well, we have to do that. Well, nobody's ever done that. Live. I guess we're going to have to do that live. Oh, we'll have to do that. Oh, well, what about the, the monitors? What about the lights? What about yeah. the sound effects? What about the so, visual effects? What about the, oh, no, wait. So Piper and Pablo, who are the art department leads, they were like, oh, let's go ahead and, and wire all of the, the lights. <laughs> so the old so aircraft they, panels. Are like, and, and we're like, these haven't lit up since the Cold War. How are you doing <laughs> that? Literally so many moving parts, not metaphorically. There are so many moving parts. And we were just joking that one day that might come to play to his chagrin. What, what is the, uh, the idea? So oh, one of the commitments is live is already cool. You had me at live sci-fi basically when, when there was, that was the idea. And then we said, okay, Nerdist, what do you think? And they were like, we're in as long as we add some interactivity for our users. And because Yuri wasn't there, I was allowed to say, that's great, guys. We'll totally Whatever do that. You want. <laughs> Whatever you want. And um, we actually developed this really cool set of plot choices and character motivation branches that um, we just finished one today where there was a beautiful set of possibilities where this universe collapsed into this story at that choice point. Right? Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. You know, we know the fate based yeah. on how the users voted, right? How the viewers voted. So it's now up to us to continue giving them that role and to continue to give them the opportunity to influence Yuri. Sometimes they're surprises, though. We're not going to tell them what's going to happen until that moment. Improv at the highest level. Right. Always ready. Improv in space. <laughs> space, improv. So when you were like, this is the thing I want to do, knowing the amount of complicated acting that would come into it and the amount of improv, what was it like? Like, how do you even prepare I, for something? I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with you. He came to me. He said, hey, can I come over? I have, I have something to pitch you. And I was like, yeah, he's, he and I have, we've known each other for a long time and we've done a lot of crazy things together. And he came over and he said, okay, I'm building a spaceship and I want you to be the pilot. And, and I just said, stop. I said, stop. Anything you say after that doesn't matter. <laughs> the answer is yes. And so it's kind of my fault. He no, could have given you the full pitch, but I you kind of just no, accepted was, your fate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You agreed to pilot the ship. Basically, after that, that's all on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 the, it's the best insane deal you've ever taken, I have, I have to say. I'm going to have yeah. to agree with you yeah. after tonight. And for the writers, they're writing a narrative that might completely change. There's no way to really plan out a Bible, so to speak, because everything's in the hands of fate and yeah, the viewer. They're the writers. <laughs> right there. Oh, wait. I see. Oh, wait, I still have some writing to do. <laughs> yeah, do. Oh, the writers. They're all oh, the writers. Right. So, well, and, and that's the thing. When you truly embrace interactive branching, it's, it's like they always talk about the time travel movies. Things quickly become so ensnarled that the butterfly turns into a monsoon you know, 10 years later, right? Right. Well, it's the same thing here. We can only go and prep up to a certain point yeah. because there are too many branches. So we're only a few episodes ahead of the viewers. And the other thing that you find as a writer is you only get to own the show until you give it to actors. And I will tell you, since the first auditions, they've been adding their own lines, which you will test to have then ended up back in the script. Oh, that's amazing. So if we tried to make an interactive story based on who these characters are revealing themselves to be, beforehand it wouldn't be true so that's why we're just barely ahead of the episodes with where the viewers want to take things and the payoff is they truly are shaping these people on the screen i've never heard anything in this medium done anywhere close to that. like choose your own goosebumps type like i've never heard of that in this format well you have goosebumps all the time uh, yeah show. i do yeah on this show i definitely i yeah i get goosebumps I can't imagine trying to shape any narrative i love that you're founding it in science so kids get to be educated while they're shaping it that so was you're involved and you're wanting to learn while you're shaping someone's journey. Was that the intent? Yeah, that was important to him and a lot of research went into it. And then he had it vetted by several, you know, scientists. Right. So. And, and Yuri actually, to his credit, took this assignment up. I've been giving him like the world's worst homework assignments of like, here's the next biography to read. They're the worst part because he's already busy. So I have then taken on to his like full-time life and said, okay, please read this astronaut's biography. And he's like, Oh God. Okay. <laughs> Here's another one. So we um, took Chris Hadfield's uh, master class together Amazing. and you know, we've been living and breathing um, space for the last year together just cause we wanted to bear witness to some of the mo most incredible people on earth. You know? Yeah. 
So on that note, playing an astronaut, but playing an astronaut that is as unprepared for space because someone else is controlling your destiny, what does it feel like being rocketed through someone else's imagination? I will tell you what, in, in all of the reading and, uh, and the, the, the research that I've done about astronauts, it is actually perfect because <laughs> the astronaut's job, I have found that, you know, in Mark Kelly's endurance and in all of everything always comes up, an astronaut has to be prepared to fix everything or anything that could possibly happen because there's nobody else up there, you know? So I kind of feel in the, in the way that that, that that works out really well. Yeah, what, what happens when you're 200,000 kilometers away from the nearest gas station, plumber, medical doctor, et cetera? And this was a challenge to Yuri to, to put him just for a moment because once we go live, whatever happens on the ship, yeah. he has to fix it as an actor. Yeah. And even in rehearsals today, the wheels were falling off around the edges. Oh, yeah. And it was like, <laughs> oh, wow. So if that happens, here's a suggestion. And, and Yuri's like, <laughs> right, like, like, so you want to high wire a general act for an actor. It's like, we're going to trap you. We're going to lock all the secret doors. And whatever happens, you've got to fix it, which is not unlike what you just said. Which is, yeah. Well, like it's like Locke. You're, you're one man in a space and you're dealing with it. But if Locke was written by people on the spot. Right. That's a right. lot. That's that. That is a lot. But you just compared me to Tom Hardy, and <laughs> I, it makes me love you even more, Coy. But I gotta say, thing. Yasmin Albastami is right out there in the darkness. Yes, she is. Because you saw her in the cold My open, and at the very end. So I, I kind of felt like Locke needed a passenger at one point. I like, <laughs> like at some point, I was like, Tom, you're a great actor, but could you just pick up a hitchhiker? Right. Could you? Could you? So. That's the hitchhiker right there. Ah, I see. Now, now. So it's not just six camera angles. You got some flavor. You can yeah, mix it up. And yeah. there's a dialogue instead yeah. of a monologue, yeah. which is always a thing. Yeah. By the way, once you see the chemistry these two have, I think you're going to – I think if you started with your socks knocked off, you're going to knock <laughs> off something else just to catch up. Because now we've got two people who are locked in this chamber together. You really can't stand each other, and it's up to them to rely on each other to survive. Oh, that's amazing. Right. That's, that's high tension right there. And how did that play with people today? How, how was the environment of, of seeing people react to people react? I haven't seen any of that yet because we've been here. We've been actually in front of the cameras. Like. I have no idea. I was in it and I haven't right. seen so anything. We, we don't know the audience you reaction because, because we've been real time the whole time. Oh, so we got their vote at the beginning and their vote at the end. But um, we're, we're sort of out here in space, like cut off from home on display in some ways which is delicious adventure, yeah. you know? That's such different, the creative making. I was going to say TV making, but it's something beyond that. And I, I walked in right as you guys wrapped, and I just see smoke and chaos, and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and, and, and you're like, give me a spaceship. I'm like, okay, that sounds like a thing I'll do. Yeah, that's what happened in Cider Heads as well, by the way. Smoke, chaos, etc. <laughs> Pre-production, production, yeah. post-production. Yeah. So you wanted to base it in science. You wanted to encourage people to learn. Sure. Does it feel like how you dreamt of it when you first had the brain, the, like the first idea in the brain? There is no way I could have dreamt of what this has become because of the number of incredible artists involved. It's people like Pablo and Piper that I just mentioned. It's Stephen Moreno as a DP. It's all the brilliant camera operators. It's Travis Stevens, whose team built this spaceship by hand. You know, and we have army veterans and we have people who come from every part of the world and every culture who bring their entire experience and understanding of science to this couldn't possibly imagine when all that comes together. Yeah. All I can give advice, the, the advice I would give to filmmakers is, you don't have to know everything, just get a lot of people together who know more than you <laughs> and let them loose. Yeah. And, 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 that, and then you get this, you get something that's different and special and it's a real pleasure to be inside it because this it was just this little idea and then it grew into this. I kind of feel like she's space worthy. I feel like we could take Joukowsky <laughs> into space pretty much with just a little more caulk. Right. And then we would get, we would get her going. So. Those Cold War buttons are lit. So, I mean, as yeah, far as I know, we're in exactly, space, right? I exactly. see space. And as far as I've heard, I'm, I'm just trusting in the <laughs> right. system, guys. Really I'm just trusting yeah. we're all okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. How do you prepare as an actor? Like all of your experience with, you know, improv and voice work and acting and everything else. Is there anything you could, you're kind of first man the movie, but in an experience. Right. Yeah, we, we beat first man, but that much. Yeah. No. Damien Chazelle. Chazelle. <laughs> Ryan Gosling. Um, I, you know, you, Stephen was, was mentioning this earlier. In some ways, I've been preparing for this show my entire life. That's true. Um, and then I just, I just got to do all my work. 
um, you know, as, as, as an actor and learn my lines and work with the camera guys and work with the other actors, rehearse and, and, and learn the ship. And then, and then, and then you kind and then I just have to get, I have to give it up and whatever happens, happens. And I just hope I don't mess everything up, you know? So much has been built. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I know. So, but that's, I know we got seven more episodes. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I can't believe we do this again in six days. That's okay. what it's like to do a television show. Just, uh, just the light that just left both of their eyes was just wow. beautiful. Wow. Wow. You guys, I, hope, I hope you didn't see that on camera. Because now I'm like, come on, get out. We got to start getting ready. Oh, we have six yeah, days. Mere hours to go. Mere hours. What switches work and what don't? Because one will cause problems. Uh, I love the idea of this. I love that you're encouraging education. I love the freewheeling madness of it and the amount of raw talent that must be involved in order for this to work yeah. from below the line above the line in i the saw line, on the, line. the line is the ship <laughs> yeah. uh yeah. it's just it's been impressive from the jump like from when i walked in everyone's been amazing and they're so invested and i love that this is birth absolutely like, it's amazing yeah well we're really thrilled that you've come to cover it and we really really appreciate it that you're here for a first yeah so this bearing is, witness that means a lot to us yeah, yeah this is amazing i'd love yeah. to see a follow-up of what happened between week one and two we yeah welcome everyone yeah, yeah, so, good. yeah, so I, I want to follow up and see how this all goes, and I, congratulations. I can't imagine so thinking this and then being in the ship of your mind. Thank you so much. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Cool. And uh, we'll see you next week on the Tchaikovsky. We'll be here.